Hello, it's John Bach from Bach Biodynamics. This is part three of the video series, Making an Insulated Beehive. And in this uh, segment, we're gonna make an insulated roof, a waterproof insulated roof, and an insulated bottom board with a removable uh, screen. The benefits of this are that the bees are gonna stay really dry with the waterproof roof, and you can use the bottom board the screen bottom board to remove the um, dead bees that you have during the winter. And so that this, these two parts, the roof and the bottom board, I think are the most important parts. And if you don't want to do the insulated hive itself, the, you can still do the roof and the bottom board to a regular single walled hive. And that'll be very beneficial uh, to the bees. I think you can do that in uh, more temperate places like maybe California and Oregon. Washington State. I live in BC. Uh, it's kind of borderline here, but uh, if you have cold winters and you have long periods where it's really uh, below freezing, you should really consider making um, also the insulated brood box um, and the supers as well. All right, enjoy. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, make the frame for the bottom board. These are some uh, eight frame, it's a uh, Langstraw size eight frame hive that uh, a friend of mine who got out of beekeeping gave me a bunch of his frame or his uh, eight frame hives. So I, I've insulated them. And so every single hive, whether it's a single uh, walled or double walled insulated like this one, the, the base of the bottom board the insulated bottom board is going to be the same dimensions as the length and width of your hive. So you start with a two by four. And uh, so the length here on the, this particular hive, it's uh, 22 and three quarters. And this piece here is going to be one and a half inches less than the length here because the, the back of it is going to be removable. And it's also going to be a two by four and a two by four is one and a half inches so whatever your length is here subtract one and a half inches and this is going to be the entrance piece so the bees have to find a way to get into the hive so this is a two by four also but it's ripped three quarters of it is taken off so this is a regular two by four which is three and a half inches this is two and three quarters which is going to form the entrance for the bees to come in and then again, this has to add up to the width of the front of your hive. So here, 16 and a quarter, here, 16 and a quarter, but that means that whatever this is, you minus three inches because it's gonna line up like that, okay? So there's an inch and a half on this side and an inch and a half on that side. So depending on your hive, this, is that width minus three. I use PL Premium. You can use carpenter's glue. Um, for this portion of it, I like to use a really solid glue uh, because it does get exposed a little bit to the elements. Um, and then I use a couple three inch screws to secure it in place. I use a total of four. Okay, so the next piece we're gonna install is the back. This is a removable back, and then you're gonna be able to slide your insulation and your, your uh, screen bottom board in here. So this piece, you do not glue. So this piece is a full, the full width of the back of your hive, so 16 and a quarter, just like the front. And then of course, like I said, this piece here is an inch and a half less so that when we put this one in, it should be a perfect square around the base of your brood box. So again, I put this in place so that this front piece will dry square. When it's dry, we're gonna take this off. We're gonna put some hanger bolts and wing nuts in here, but let this dry first and then double check your hive box should fit perfectly uh, to the dimensions 
of um, the bottom board. So the next step is we're going to put in some runners on the bottom of the bottom board so that um, you can slide in your insulated bottom board which also serves as a row board. So these are just two by fours. I ripped these. They're three quarters by half inch. You'll need a lot of this because we're also going to make our screen bottom board out of this if, if you want to go that route. So again three quarters by half inch and then uh, I use the three quarter high side here. This is the half inch side. Um, I leave a gap about half an inch on the back side here um, and that just makes it so that uh, any swelling or anything that happens and I'm only going to cut the next one you'll see here. There'll be a little gap here but that's okay. And this just goes flush to the bottom. This is the front piece. And this is the back piece right here. And you can see there's a pretty big gap in here. I'm not worried about that. The uh, insulated piece is going to fit right in here. All right, so put in the uh, bottom runners here. And uh, the next step is to make the removable back here of the hive. So. I'm using what are known as hanger bolts. They're uh, threaded for metal screws on our metal bolts on one side and threaded for wood on the other. So this is a one quarter inch by three inch long hanger bolt with a quarter inch wing nut. All this is uh, readily available at your building center. So I'm going to remove the three inch screw in the back on the uh, unglued back side. That's the front with the entrance. I'm only going to remove. That's hot. I'm only going to remove one side. This is a uh, three-eighths drill bit, and I'm going to only drill it through uh, this part. I'm not going to drill into here because you want this to bite in here, but you want some wiggle room for this to slide in. So this is actually the three-eighths is bigger than the quarter, but it gives it a little bit of wiggle room here. So, so I just line it up with the old. Uh, just make sure it's um, flush here, and then drill. <laughs> And um, you can feel when you hit the other side there. Now I ran out of uh, PLP premium, but that's okay. So now you just take one of your uh, hanger bolts, put a bit of glue on it because you want it to stay in there nice and snug. I take my drill and I leave about a half inch in there and crank it up pretty tight because if it slips a bit, it'll strip the uh, thread. So I wait till it's in there, give it a good uh, twist and then I'm going to go in here and then I just undo it and that's it. So then you have your first um, wing nut here. You can tighten that right up and then you do the other side. So that's it there. Now you have a removable back so when you're checking in the spring for uh, how things are going uh, if the weather's cold in the fall, uh, you want to put uh, a row board in, and you got to watch the glue here a little bit because it'll um, it'll stick to that wood. So it's a good idea to let this dry like this um, before you put this back in. So, anyways, your row board will just slide in like this. Um, this, by the way, is uh, one inch styro span, um, and I have about a quarter inch gap here and a quarter inch gap in the back. So. Uh, whatever this measurement is here, quarter inch, quarter inch less, and it'll slide right in there. And uh, that's the insulated board. You put your screws in there and uh, keeps the bees nice and warm in the winter. And also serves, like I said, as a good row board. You don't have to use this as a row board, but it does work as a row board. <clears throat> All right, so now what we need to do, we have a track that's going to um, support the uh, insulated board now we need to put a track in that's going to support the removable screen itself so again it's the same distance for my hive it's uh, 19 inches by 11 inches these pieces and again there's gaps here you don't have to be exact and what I've got here is a because I'm using 
a one inch dow styro span. This is a one and one eighth piece of plywood that I cut that's gonna serve as my uh, template to uh, make sure that I'm running things um, properly here. And I'm using a one and a quarter inch brad nail. Again, it's the three quarter inch by half inch uh, pieces of two by four that I ripped on the table saw. <clears throat> so now we have uh, our first layer where the uh, styro span goes. This is what uh, our screen, removable screen is gonna sit on. Um, it's a little bit more work. Again, it's gonna be using uh, three quarter by half inch. You at this point can stop, and if you just wanna staple a screen on here, you can be done um, and you, can, uh, you won't have a removable screen, but uh, that'll work. It'll work just fine this way. I like to have a pullout screen so I can uh, take the dead bees out in the spring. I think that's uh, helpful for the bees. Okay, so the next step in the process is we're gonna make uh, the screen bottom board here. And uh, so I make the screen an eighth of an inch uh, smaller than the inner dimensions of the bottom board. So in this case, uh, the width is 13 and an eighth, and the length is uh, 19 and uh, 5 eighths. So I'll make it an eighth shorter on both ends. So also I have uh, three quarter inch wood here, so you can configure it however you want, but I take these two outer edges and I take the three quarters, three quarters, inch and a half, and I take it off of this piece here and then just glue it together. So you glue your frame in the bottom. Again, using that three quarter by half inch rip two by four. Now using an inch and a quarter brad nail. So then you have a frame like this, and you can just uh, pop it in there to make sure it fits. Okay, so we have the top, this is the bottom part of our uh, uh, screen bottom board, and the next step is gonna be making uh, the top part. And um, here, again, inch and a half, or inch and a quarter brads. And we'll leave this last piece. This last piece, by the way, is only a quarter inch. It's for the entrance so the bees can get in and out. Uh, we leave that open, so don't put that piece in yet. So you're gonna have a top piece that looks something like this. Okay, so uh, we have our two frames made here. And uh, I use eighth of an inch hardware cloth. You can use uh, screen door cloth too, the metal. Don't use nylon because um, Hornets and other bees will chew through that and you'll have a robbing problem. I like the eighth inch because uh, it's pretty strong, it's quite thick, and it's got big enough gaps for, for the veromite to get through. It's a little harder to cut. Um, so then I uh, put a glue, I've got my frame underneath the hardware cloth and then I use some glue and uh, just put a bead of glue down on top of the hardware cloth all the way around. And I've got uh, three quarter inch brad nails in my gun. And then you just push it down. And uh, you can cut this first if you want, cut it exactly. I make a lot of these, so I use an angle grinder, which makes it easier. And then the last piece here goes here. It's gonna stick a little bit because it's um, more than the brads are probably gonna pop through a little bit and I'll just tap them from the other side.
So now you can either cut it with um, some tin snips. Uh, it's kind of a hard cut, or you can cut uh, with a, a utility knife, a sharp blade. They'll cut through this. Um, but like I say, I like to use, uh, this is an angle grinder with uh, a metal bit and uh, a steel blade, a thin, uh, pardon me, a thin steel blade. So normally I would run maybe three or four of these. I'd have them all put in and then I'll cut them all at the same time. But if you're just doing one or two hives, you can do them um, by themselves. And I'll just show you how well this works. Um, and this is the last step. I almost forgot the last step for the uh, bottom board. This is the landing board that we're going to put here for the bees. It's a one by four and it's on a, I just rip it on the table saw to a 30 degree bevel. It's a good angle for the bees. And I got some glue on there, one and a quarter inch brads and uh, just pop it on. And that is uh, the bottom board for a Bach hive. Okay, so we're gonna make the roof right now. And uh, I like to make a roof that's two, and a, two inches on either side of uh, whatever the size of your brood box. So uh, that's a nice overhang on the front and the back. So in this particular case, it's 16 inches. So uh, the cut here is 20. And then uh, the length is, uh, just uh, under 23, so it's about 27. So we're gonna have a two inch overhang on that. That's just an easy cut. I use half inch piece of plywood. So I ripped that on the saw. I like to make a slant on the roof as well so that uh, the rain will flow off the back. And the way you do that is you take a piece of two by four and I make a two by four that's a half an inch longer than uh, the length of the brood box and a half an inch wider. So in this case, the long piece here is going to be 23 because it's about 22 and a half. So I'm making it a half inch longer, which turns out to be a 23 inch piece. And then I cut an inch and a half. I make a line inch and a half on the two by four on one end, take the ruler and then you go right to the very top of the other end, three and a half inches up and draw and score a line right there. And you're going to cut that. So I'm going to cut this right here um, with my saw. All right, so I have my saw. Uh, you can use a jigsaw for this. It's not an easy cut. So if you don't feel comfortable, uh, I would suggest just making a flat roof without a slope. Um, so I'm doing an angle here and uh, just be careful with it. I have a bunch more of these to make. So I use this piece here as a template for cutting on the table saw. So I've made my first one, the rest of them I'm gonna cut on my table saw. If you're just making one roof or two roofs, you can keep doing what you're doing. But if you make a lot, uh, save this piece, you can mark it as a template and I'll show you what to do next. So uh, here's, the next cut we're going to do on the saw again this is not an easy cut if you don't feel comfortable with doing this don't and this wood's a little wet so i'm a little nervous doing it too this is where you can get a danger of kicking but i took that last piece that i'm using here as a template i'm putting it on the fence and then i'm going to move the fence right to the edge of the two by four so that's the three and a half point of the two by four right on the edge there lock your blade and then you have to keep these two pieces flush and you run it through I go do a switch around and I pull from the other side and that way if it kicks I'll just let it go so you could so you can see with that cut, the saw, that's a 240 
and uh, it was struggling a little bit. So there's a lot of torque on there, so be careful. But when you do that, you cut a perfect, uh, you cut a perfect template each time. You cut the perfect piece every time. So I'm going to make a few roofs, but uh, that's how I cut the, the, cr the length pieces of the roof to get the slope. All right, so we've got all our roof pieces cut here. And um, the back piece here is just a two by four, an inch and a half. And um, it's only an inch wide. You don't need a lot of strength on this piece here. And uh, just the thing to remember is you want a half inch overhang on whatever the size of your brood box. So mine's 16, so this is gonna be 16 and a half. And then I got some three inch screws, PL Premium. Um, you can, again, use carpenter's glue. But uh, if you do, use an exterior glue. We're just gonna screw these in. Okay, so we've got <coughs> our roof piece done and uh, the part of the roof that provides the slant. So the roof now, the plywood just goes on top of that piece. And uh, I know I have a two inch overhang, so I've cut a two inch piece of wood and I'm just gonna run that right here, put it down, put this down here. And that's where my first screw will go. And I know it's two inches, so I know there's a two by four. Right after two inches, it's an inch and a half uh, for a two by four, so I just go in at two and three quarters. Then I do the same thing on the other side, my two inch overhang here, square that up. Two inch, this one's a little bit off, but it'll work fine. Same deal. Perfect, there you go. And then I just put screws all the way down. I put uh, three on every uh, side. All right, so uh, we've attached the uh, rim structure to the, the flat roof part, and now we're gonna add the insulated portion. So the insulated portion is gonna be whatever the inside dimensions here are uh, that you have left. So for me, it's 13 and a half by uh, 20 and a half. I pre-cut it. So it goes in there, you want a nice snug fit. Put it in. Again, it's one inch styro span. And I'm using again, half inch by three quarter, which is the same stuff we use to make the bottom board. Uh, and you don't wanna go all the way back with these two struts and they just hold them in place. I put them here and uh, Brad nail it in. This is uh, one and a quarter inch Brad. That's all you need to do for the insulated part. We just have two steps and then we're done. We're gonna put a little uh, piece of plywood here and then we're gonna put the waterproof plastic on the roof. Okay, so now we're gonna put the rim around uh, the roof here and um, I've ripped the ha half inch uh, plywood, two inches in width and uh, we have a one and a half inch base right here on the trailing edge, bit of glue. Um, and this one goes right to the exact end. It butts up to the ends. And then uh, I do the next edge, and I just use a piece of half inch plywood to uh, act as a template to kind of just make sure that I'm flush. Half inch up is all you want. So I put that there. And then your length pieces are gonna be the length here plus one inch because uh, you have your two half inch pieces. And then you can check and just make sure your roof fits over the box that you just cut and uh, that fits perfect. So the last step is to put our plastic waterproof roof on top here, it's very important. All right, <clears throat> so here's the final step for the roof. Um, we've got everything assembled, it's all looking good. Now we just need the waterproof roof top. 
So I don't know what this is called. It's like uh, corrugated cardboard. They sell it in four by eight sheets at uh, your local building center. It's about 20 bucks. Um, I cut again another half inch beyond. So I've got about 20 here and uh, 26 and a half here. So I go about a half inch beyond. I don't bother lining anything up officially. I just use my fingers and you can look here and look and see if you're parallel on both sides. And that's really quite accurate. And then I take a one inch screw. You can put washers in there too. Uh, I've done both with washers and without. This works well. You take a little bit of silicone. This is a, it's a Dynaflex DAP 230. Indoor, outdoor, uh, windows, doors, any real silicone, outdoor silicone will work pretty good. Get a bit on the tip of your screw. And then uh, I go two and a half and two and a half. So I'll mark a two and a half here. Put a little mark there on the two and a half, two and a half mark. Make sure I'm lined up. And then pop one in here. I don't go all the way down. I like to have a little bead that comes out and that's a nice, then I know I'm totally sealed. And then do the same thing here on each edge. So you're gonna work your way all the way around in the corners and then I just fill in the gaps halfway through. So there you have it. There's the waterproof portion of the roof, insulated on the bottom. Very, very important component. And as I said before, if you don't want to insulate your hives, do the bottom board and the roof, uh, and that'll help enormously. Um, and this is a hive made like this. It will last as long as you're alive if you take good care of it. Um, just stain it every couple of years. And uh, to me, it's a lot of work, but it's a worthwhile investment and your bees will love you for it. The last thing I wanted to mention is the inside cover. It's the last thing that has to be made. I'm not gonna demonstrate it. Uh, this is really easy. It's just the, the regular one and a half inch width of a two by four ripped to half an inch, quarter inch plywood, front and back. And I leave a two inch entrance and then I just brad nail it and glue it and it fits exactly the dimensions of uh, your brood box. So here's a finished hive. Best hive you can get, and you can make them yourself.